Congratulations on your eight eight and a half million dollar lottery win, or your VC raise, uh, your Series A round for Text Eagle. Um, tell me how you plan to use that money. Yeah, I, I, I hate the idea of framing it as lottery because this is a, it, it fundamentally was not one money, but rather money that's invested that we've, we've sold part of our, you know, our baby to, uh, to, to get. Um, how we're using the money uh, is really we're focused on, on building out a, a, a team of, uh, of stellar people who have a passion for emerging markets. So, um, so I think headcount is going to be the, the major thing. So tell us about, in a nutshell, what it does and then take us through the, the genesis. What we do is we, we uh, provide a gateway so that it allows these, these global brands or these market research companies or these ad agencies uh, to be able to uh, ask a question of, a, of an individual in a place like rural Botswana um, and potentially even engage with that person. Uh, and we can, the engagement has to do with this compensation platform that we've integrated into the back-end billing systems of now 232 mobile operators. What this allows us to do is compensate all of their prepaid uh, mobile phone subscribers. And so to date, we have, uh, we have, we, we have the ability to uh, not only communicate, but compensate 2.1 billion people. So um, Nathan, I was fascinated when I heard about this sort of compensation platform. Um, over in the UK and in developed markets, brands have been targeting consumers using their personal data, uh, sometimes uh, with the customer's knowledge, sometimes without. And uh, there's a company that I came across recently in the UK called Allow, which is allowing people to take take back control of their personal data and the first thing this company does if you register with them takes you off all the big marketing databases, the experience, action to this world. So uh, it seems to me that what you're doing in emerging markets is almost short circuiting this and putting people from day one in control of their personal data. Absolutely. I mean I, I, I've been a big believer um, in enabling people to be able to somehow monetize or sometime, somehow gain some value out of the data that they're uh, that they're generating every day. Um, and so what we've built is this platform that allows them to directly do that. Um, it, they, they have the option to opt out completely and we will never touch their number again. They have the option to continue to monetize uh, their personal data um, and get airtime in exchange for you know, filling out uh, short demographic surveys or getting airtime to uh, provide their opinions about you know, whether that particular logo is better or worse than the previous one. Uh, presumably this is Western brands that are trying to sort of make a mark in, in emerging territory. Are, are real, really targeting going forward channel partners. Okay. So either working with the major ad agencies, working with the major market research firms, and providing, providing them a mechanism to, uh, to reach out and engage these billion people on behalf of you know, their clients, which end up being those global brands. Yeah, and, what, and what is the real sort of IP about this service? What, you know, how low or high is the barrier to entry to somebody coming in and uh, doing exactly what you've done? So, the, I mean, this, this took over three, to, to build out this network of 232 mobile operators across close to 90 countries, uh, this took three years of more or less full-time work. Um, but that said, uh, I, I think the bigger barrier to entry really is the relationship that we're building with all of these people. Sure. Um, and so, you know, that's that's what we're running towards. We've got a lot of IP around the technology. We've got a, uh, both on the communication side and the, and the compensation side. But um, frankly, I feel like this is Greenfield right now. We're in the first mover position, and we just need to go very quickly to basically establish a relationship with as many people in this in this database as we can, um, because that's really the barrier. Sure. Where would you like to be in a year's time, Nathan? Uh, so right now we have access to 2.1 billion. Uh, by the end of this year, I'd like that number to be 3 billion. Uh, in terms of people who are actively uh, registered in our in our database and have agreed to opt in to receive targeted offers, I'd like to be in the in um, close to 10 million. If uh, is, would be the real goal. Um, so so that's kind of where I see us. I'd like to see us be able to win in China. I mean, right now we haven't, uh, we haven't gone big in China yet, but I think uh, China is strategically important for, for us for obvious reasons. Are there any issues trying to penetrate some of these markets? Are any of the operators sort of... Oh, the operators never, you know, it's never an issue on the operator side because frankly, you know, we, we buy a bunch of airtime from operators. So that's not our, so, so we are um, an alternate revenue stream from the operator's perspective. Um, there has been a lot of uh, a lot of issues with the right way to uh, frame our value proposition and grow in different markets. So, for example, in the Philippines, we do extraordinarily well with uh, referrals. 
So you, know, you, you earn a small amount of airtime for every friend that you refer. And these referral networks are, um, grow, grow, our, grow our database like, uh, like nothing else. Whereas referral networks in a place like Pakistan don't work at all. And so we have to use other mechanisms to engage with people there. Good luck. Thank this you. Well done and good luck. Appreciate it.